Halina po at pakinggan ang isa pa nating kapatid na narrator na si Malayang Imahinasyon. Nagtatampok ng mga kwentong hango sa mga totoong pangyayari o pwedeng katang isip lamang. Mga kwentong mapapaisip ka o di kaya'y dadalhin ka sa pantasya. At palagi niyang pinapaalala na hindi lahat ng naririnig mo o nakikita mo ay totoo. Malay mo, bunga lang ito ng malikot mong isipan at nabuo sa iyong malayang imahinasyon. Tayo na at makinig. Salamat. The story that you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. John George Hay, commonly known as the Acid Bath Murderer, was an English serial killer who was convicted for the murders of six people, although he claimed to have killed nine. Hay bludgeoned or shot his victims to death, then disposed of their bodies in sulfuric acid before forging their signatures and selling their belongings for large amounts of money. John Hay was born in Stamford, Lincolnshire on July 24, 1909, and grew up in the village of Outwood, West Riding of Yorkshire. His parents, Alfred and Emily, were members of the Plymouth Brethren, an extremely conservative and anti-modern Protestant sect who advocated very austere lifestyles. He was confined to living within a 10-feet fence that his father put up around their garden to lock out the outside world. Hay would later claim he suffered from recurring religious nightmares in his childhood. Despite these limitations, he developed great proficiency in the piano, which he learned at home. He left school at 17 and was apprenticed for a time to a motor engineer. He left home and on July 6, 1934, he married Betty Hammer, a 23-year-old that others described as a good-time girl. Their marriage didn't last. The same year, he was jailed for fraud. Betty gave birth while he was in prison, but she gave the baby girl up for adoption and left Hay. His conservative family ostracized him from then onwards. Not wanting to work for someone else, he started in business for himself by forging vehicle documents. He was soon brought to justice for this and he received 15 months at Leeds Assizes in November 1934. On his release, he started a dry cleaning business with a partner. This was quite a successful venture until his partner was killed in a car crash and the business collapsed. He then moved to London and became chauffeur to William McSwan, a wealthy owner of an amusement park. He and McSwan became friends, but Hay still wanted to set himself up in business. He did, but as a bogus solicitor, earning himself four years in jail for fraud. He was released just after the start of the Second World War, then jailed again for theft. While in prison, he dreamt up what he considered the perfect murder, removing the body by dissolving it with acid. He experimented with mice and found it took only 30 minutes for the body to disappear. On September 9, 1944, the two men went for a drink at the Goat in Kensington High Street. They then went to 79 Gloucester Road where Hay had a workshop. Here, Hay smashed Max Wan's skull. He then put Max Wan's body into a 40-gallon drum and tipped concentrated sulfuric acid onto it. Two days later, he returned to find the body had become sludge which he poured down a manhole. He then went to see Max Wan's parents, with whom he got along quite well with, and told them that their son had gone into hiding to avoid being called out for military service. By sending the couple letters purporting to be from their son, he was able to keep the deception going. But William and Amy became curious as to why their son had not returned as the war was coming to an end. So, he murdered them too. On July 2, 1945, he lured them to Gloucester Road and disposed of them. Acting as William McSwan, he managed to obtain legal control of all their possessions and sold everything, making over £4,000 in the process, which in 1945 was a great deal of money. By the summer of 1947, Hay, a gambler, was running short of money. 
he found another couple to kill and rob, Dr. Archibald Henderson and his wife Rose, whom he met after showing an interest in the house they were selling. On February 12, 1948, he drove the Henderson to Crawley to show them an invention. When they arrived, he shot Henderson in the head with a revolver he had earlier stolen from the doctor's house. He then lured Mrs. Henderson to the workshop, claiming her husband had fallen ill and shot her also and disposed of their bodies in oil drums filled with acid. He forged a letter from them and sold all their belongings except for their dog, which he kept. By February 1949, he had been living in the Onslow Court Hotel, South Kensington, for four years. One of the other residents was Mrs. Olive Duran Deacon. She was a 69-year-old widow who had lived at the hotel for over six years. The two often exchanged pleasantries at mealtimes and he had told her that he was an engineer and an inventor. At lunch on February 14, Mrs. Duran Deacon showed Hay some false fingernails that she had designed and asked Hay if he could improve the idea to a product that would be marketable. He told her that he would think about it. On the 18th, the two of them drove to Hay's ramshackle workshop in Crawley in his Elvis. Here, he shot her in the back of the head and after removing her jewelry and fur coat, put her body in a 45-gallon corrosion resistive drum and filled up the tank with sulfuric acid. He returned to Onslow Court Hotel and ate a three-course dinner. The next day, Saturday, guests at the hotel who were getting anxious about the absence of Mrs. Duran Deacon from breakfast asked Hay if he knew of her whereabouts. He told them that he had arranged to meet her but that she had failed to turn up for their appointment. By Sunday, it was obvious that something was wrong. Hay approached Mrs. Constance Lane who had shown concern the day before and asked if anything had been heard from the missing woman. Mrs. Lane told him that she had had no news and that she intended going to the police that afternoon. He offered to accompany her and drove her to Chelsea Police Station. On Monday, Scotland Yard's record office was contacted and Hay's criminal record came to light. Hay had driven to Crawley that morning and emptied the sludge from the tank onto the ground outside the workshop. He had then gone to Horsham and had Mrs. Duran Deacon's jewelry valued. When he returned to the hotel, the police were waiting for him. He gave them a statement reiterating his story about the missed appointment. Thursday saw the police back at Onslow Court Hotel for another statement from Hay, which was largely the same as his first statement, but with a few extra details. Saturday, February 26, the police visited the workshop at Crawley. The door to the workshop was forced and the detectives noted the rubber apron, gas mask, and empty carboys. They also found a recently fired 38 Enfield revolver and a dry cleaning receipt for a black Persian lamp coat. At 4.15 on Monday, February 28, Detective Inspector Albert Webb was waiting at Onslow Court when Hay returned. Webb took Hay back to Chelsea Police Station to assist them with their inquiries. Later that night, he confessed to Webb saying, I've destroyed her with acid. You'll find the sludge that remains at Leopold Road. Every trace has gone. How can you prove murder if there's no body? He went on to add the McSwans and the Hendersons to his confession claiming that he had killed them all so that he could drink their blood and attempt to convince the police of insanity. On Tuesday, March 1st, Home Office pathologist Dr. Keith Simpson examined the Crawley workshop. He found bloodstains on the walls and a hat pin at the bottom of the 45-gallon drum. After Dr. Simpson had noticed a gallstone in the sludge in the yard, all the residue was collected and taken to the police laboratory. Here it was processed and it produced a list that included 28 pounds of animal fat, part of a foot, two more gallstones, and a full set of dentures. This, once identified by Mrs. Duran Deacon's dentist, sealed Hay's fate. During the investigation, it became apparent that Hay was using the acid to destroy the victim's bodies because he misunderstood the term corpus delicti, thinking that if the victim's bodies could not be found, then a murder conviction would not be possible. The substantial forensic evidence notwithstanding the absence of his victims' bodies was sufficient for him to be convicted for the murders and subsequently executed. He was charged with the murder of Mrs. Duran Deacon on March 2 and removed to Lewis Prison. His trial began at Lewis Assizes on July 18, 1949 and finished the following afternoon. 
Though they did try a defense of insanity and claimed that he was also a vampire and had drank a glass of blood of each of his victims. It took the jury 17 minutes to find him guilty. He was hanged by Pier Point at Wandsworth on August 10, 1949. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.